at a higher level of evolution and maybe even other dimensional level than we are. And they're, they're, it's, a, it's, a, it's an intelligence that knows us very, very well and, and uses our um, you know, familiar symbols to, to communicate uh, information to us and, and also kind of resonance. Uh, a lot of them take um, sacred symbols, uh, you know, like the yin yang or star of David and create fractals out of them. So they're kind of showing us this juncture between these ancient symbols from our, from our esoteric traditions, mystical traditions, and our modern scientific uh, worldview. So I think they're really pointing towards that integration of, of, of the left and right brain. Um, when you explore them, there's a lot of amazing like synchronicities that happen, like who you meet where and how you get knowledge and so on, and, and they almost seem like a game or, or a puzzle. Um, it's a very, very wonderful phenomenon and, and very gentle. Um, you know, another way to think about it is like, you know, anthropologists, if they were to discover an uncontacted tribe somewhere, you know, a hundred years ago they, they would have just gone in, you know, guns blazing or whatever, you know, or dropped a helicopter on them, you know, 30 years ago. Now they would recognize that, you know, they have to find a juncture to communicate with, with, that, with that culture, you know, and, and sort of slowly and, and gently kind of bring them up to speed on, on, on what, what is, you know, what, what they're missing in terms of their knowledge system. So I kind of think that's what the crop circles are, are doing with us. You have a question? Are, are well, I mean, I think we should have questions because there's such a little time. I have a question. Have you ever wanted to investigate the possibility that crop circles are a species of scam Especially if you get into reading all this stuff, you get into a very dark mindset where everything is like a negative trip, you know. Uh, I don't know, the, the experience of exploring those is a very positive one. And I personally feel that, like, first of all, to me it's a very obvious that there will be galactic civilizations. I mean, look how far we came in 200 years, you know. We could, like, barely, we didn't even have, like, you know, a bus, you know, 100 years ago, right? You know, so, so you know, imagine the civilization goes through this evolution, there's some form of the crisis that we're now in and then develops for 5,000 years, 100,000 years, a million years. We, we can't even conceive of how they would operate in, in the galaxy. And, and clearly, if they were malevolent and destructive, we wouldn't see like stars and planets out there. We would see a bunch of dust, you know, because look what our nuclear weapons can already do here. You know, so I think it's very likely that, you know, there are a lot of other species or forms of intelligence that have reached a higher level, and they're very likely to be benevolent. And they're, and they're very, very likely to work on, on the principles that, um, you know, as we come to understand them, uh, are going to be very uh, elevated for us. Um, you know, like, uh, like some of Jose Willis's ideas, that there, maybe it's about kind of synchronizing, harmonizing the, 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 you know, the galaxy.
to move beyond that. Um, and there's been excellent work uh, done by uh, Walter Cruttenden and the Binary Research Institute, I don't know if you know about this, um, which suggests, which links the phenomenon of the precession of the equinoxes to the Yuga cycle, uh, and which works with Sri Yukteswar's 24,000 year uh, cycle, uh, which also suggests that we're, uh, that we're on an upswing right now. Um, and interestingly uh, explains precession not in terms of a wobble on the Earth's axis, uh, but with the suggestion that our sun is locked in a binary orbit around another star, uh, and that we're being carried through different uh, electromagnetic uh, influences uh, on this vast journey, 24,000 year journey around another star. Uh, and it's well known now that electromagnetic fields uh, do uh, influence consciousness uh, profoundly, uh, and we might just be about to get some galactic help, you know, uh, on the, the next stage of our evolution as a as a species. I certainly hope so. Anyway. You know. Yes, at the back there. Hey. You, you indeed. Uh, keep in mind the fact that human beings have. Uh, 250 genomes that are not found in any lower species. I just wanted to know what your thoughts were on ancient astronaut theory and the Sumerian uh, Sorry, what's habits. Your base, what's your basis for that? Because we share 70% of our genes with fruit flies. And uh, we share 99.1% uh, with uh, gorillas and chimpanzees. Yeah, we have two, but there's, I've read in different books and stuff that there, we have 250 genomes that are not found in any lower I, species. I absolutely don't believe that. I've, I've, I've done quite a lot of work on, on uh, genetics and I don't, I don't see anything special about humanity. I see us as absolutely knitted into the web of life on this planet. I see that what's special about us is um, the, the miracle of consciousness and the ability to choose, but I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't feel that we're an alien species on this planet. I feel that we're we are absolutely part of the web of life on this planet, and there are deeply conserved areas of DNA which go right back a billion years or more, which are present in us and are present in other animal species. Um, I, I, I must say I resist the notion that humanity is um, genetically out of place on this planet. I would say genetically we're exactly where we are, uh, and, and all of life on this planet is part of the web uh, in which we too are, are woven. Um, and I've not found any evidence to contradict that in my research. And I would say, um, I would say, check your sources very carefully because there's a lot of wild speculation around this area, which most of which is complete rubbish, to be honest. Well, what about the text, though? The, what about what? The Sumerian tablets that have the planets all aligned, and we even have Pluto in it and everything. Zachariah Sitchin's work. Yeah. Um, well, you know, Zachariah is uh, is is a thorough and. Uh, and and uh, honest and, and, and convinced researchers, but his uh, interpretations of the Sumerian tablets have been, you know, seriously questioned by others who read Sumerian better than he does. Um, nevertheless, there's no doubt that the Sumerians uh, had, were, had, had masterful uh, astronomical knowledge, very, very high level, as did the ancient Egyptians. Um, this, to me, has always seemed easier to explain with the notion of a lost human civilization that had uh, explored uh, our realm more thoroughly than we imagined in the past, and the needing to invoke uh, aliens. I'm not saying that aliens don't exist. I agree with Daniel. The universe is full of life. I, I think that's what the universe is for. It's a, it's, it's a home for life. And undoubtedly, we have an extraordinary phenomenon going on right now with UFO sightings. Uh, and abductions, although we hear less about abductions these days. Um, I am of the view that we may jump too quickly to the conclusion that this is simply physical beings like us who have come with advanced technology from the other side of this universe. Uh, we have a phenomenon here. For all I know, these beings may be coming to us from another dimension. Uh, of, uh, of time and space rather than simply this dimension uh, and, and uh, influencing and interacting with us in certain ways. But I think I would be, I would be pursuing a losing argument if I, were to, if I were to argue that the human genome is somehow vastly different from the rest of life on this, on this planet.